This video will discuss how to compute bond angles in molecules and demonstrate a simple Python script that computes those from XYZ files. All right, so an angle geometrically could be defined as being the angle between any three points or the angle between any two vectors. And we're going to use both of these definitions to help us in this video. So let's say we have this water molecule. So it has three atoms, HOH. Each of them would be represented in an XYZ file as three Cartesian coordinates in three dimensional space. So we have <clears throat> uh, three points which define these atoms. And additionally, we can define vectors. We can define these as atoms I, J, K. We can define vector from uh, J to I. We can define a vector from J to K and define the angle either between these three points or equivalently between these two vectors. Okay, so what exactly is a vector going to be? So vector AB connecting points A and B, like we might imagine either of these uh, pairs of atoms here. That'd be the final minus initial x coordinate times the x unit vector, x direction, plus final minus initial y coordinate, yb minus ya times y unit vector, plus z final minus z initial times the z. So that gives you where it points in the x, y, and z direction for our vector. Then we have the concept of the magnitude of a vector, which you can review from the uh, vectors video in the math review playlist if you like. Magnitude of a vector um, is basically like the bond length between these two points as we've computed from our previous videos. So magnitude of a vector comes from the Pythagorean theorem, square root of x final minus x initial squared plus square plus uh, y final minus y initial squared plus z final minus z initial squared. All of that square root gives us the magnitude or the length of this vector. Okay, additionally, we have the concept of a dot product of a vector, a dot b, which in three dimensions would be ax times bx plus ay times by plus az times bz. Again, being called the dot product or scalar product or inner product of two vectors. All right, and then we have the concept of a unit vector. So a unit vector, we take a vector and we divide it by its magnitude. So it, taking a vector and dividing it by its magnitude means that the magnitude of our new vector is going to be one. So the magnitude of a unit vector is always going to be one. And we represent uh, general vectors by this kind of half arrow on top. And we represent unit vectors by the sort of uh, caret on top, which in quantum mechanics we've been using to represent operators, but here is indicating a unit vector. Okay, so if you work through all the math, you'll be able to show that the dot product of two vectors, R I R J I and R J K, which are the two vectors connecting our uh, external and interior atoms of this bond here, RJI dot RJK, that is equal to the magnitude of RJI times the magnitude of RJK times the cosine of the angle theta IJK. So the cosine of the angle between the unit vectors times their magnitudes is their dot product. So in each case, we have the magnitude of each vector appears here. So if we use the unit vector instead, we'd be dividing uh, by each of their magnitudes, and what would be left over would just be the cosine. So the dot product of unit vector ji with unit vector jk is equal to the cosine of the angle between those two vectors, which is the cosine of our bond angle between these three points. Okay, so in order to get the angle, we just need to take the inverse of this, take the arc cosine, get our uh, theta out by itself. So our bond angle, theta i, j, k, between atoms i, j, and k is equal to the arc cosine, inverse of the cosine, of r hat j, i dot r hat j, k, the dot product of unit vectors j, i and unit vector j, k. 
Okay, so this is an arc cosine. So the domain of that is going to be from, or sorry, the range of that is going to be from 0 degrees to 180 degrees. So our bond angle can has a restriction. So the smallest it can be is 0 degrees, 0 radians, or 100, biggest it can be is 180 degrees, pi radians. Uh, we have the symmetry here. If you note that um, if we take theta kji, that's the same as theta ijk. So reversing all the indices, you get the same bond angle again. Additionally, uh, if, if we look at these three bond angles, this one, this one, and this one, those three form a triangle. The angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if you take a cyclic permutation of all those, those add up to 180 degrees, theta ijk plus theta jki plus theta kij. All right, and once again, um, the number of angles in a molecule should scale linearly with the number of atoms. If we have n atoms, there's a maximum number of bonds that each atom can be a part of. And thus, there's also going to be a maximum number of angles that each uh, atom can be a part of. Because we're only going to count this angle if Rij and Rjk, if both of those are bonds. So we're only going to count the angle if I is bonded to J and J is bonded to K. So that means we should have a linear number of angles in the molecule. It should scale as N. But the number of uh, trios, number of triplets of atoms that we would have to compare for bond angles, would scale cubically. So now that's not a very big deal when we have 5, 10, or 20 atoms. But if you were to do this on 10,000 or 100,000 atoms, the difference between 100,000 cubed and 100,000 is a big deal. So this is just introducing the concept that we need to be aware of things like algorithmic complexity, thinking about how our algorithms are going to scale when we apply them to very, very large situations, if our program will ever be applied to those types of uh, molecules. Okay, so let's see. We can go to VMD, where I got this water molecule here. So this animation is an example where I'm changing the bond angle, but keeping the bond lengths constant. So that's what it looks like when I'm only changing the bond angle. This sort of looks like the uh, scissor motion of water vibrations, if you're familiar with the three vibrational modes of water. Okay, so that's our, that's our uh, vibration there. So if we go to our Jupyter notebook here, so continuing on from where I was in the previous video, I'm in that same geometry analysis notebook, which is in the kind of notebooks uh, directory within the top level structure of my uh, computational chemistry repository, which I was showing last time from my GitHub page. If either of these will do me the courtesy of loading, not so good uh, yet today. Okay, so instead of using this bonds.py um, type script, what I'm going to use instead is going to be, let's see, scripts, I'm going to go to geometry analysis, I'm going to go to angles.py. So this is going to have all the stuff we had from the previous video, but I have some extra functions in here which are going to help us deal with uh, the ability to print the angles, uh, compute dot product between two unit vectors, unit vector between two, two uh, points, uh, A123, there's where we get our angle, and then we're going to get all the angles inside of our atom. All right, so last time we looked at our uh, ethane. If I want to expand or collapse this, I can click over on the left-hand side here. So I had, we had the initial XYZ coordinates of our ethane molecule, and then we got our bond graph of that, and we found our seven bonds in that ethane molecule. If we want to repeat that here, we can do so. So we have the angles script, which I'm going to be using here. And then um, first for water, if I execute that, so here's the XYZ coordinates of water, found the bond lengths, 
0.97 angstroms for each, and they have a bond angle of 109.47 degrees. So that's the actual uh, starting structure of the water molecule that I was showing you over here in VMD. And then if we do this for ethane, a little bit more complicated of a molecule, shift enter, then I get the same kind of output, but I additionally find 12 bond angles with those uh, bond angles all in degrees there.